Hey guys, Nakma here, and today we're going to be ranking the mystery games I played. And here's the list. Now, of these games, I haven't played all of all of it. In fact, I'm only using a template someone else made in the past. Uh, I was on that server, and I know some of the people there. And, and they basically made this uh, list, giant list. I have played, I actually didn't play like 50% of the games in here. But uh, starting from the game that I did play, here, no one has to die. So about this game, Four people are trapped inside a building, and it's on fire, and you as the player has to choose who will survive from all these four. And it's an interesting concept, and it's also very interesting to see other people play it because, well, their men mental gymnastics, will they save, uh, this, uh, save the woman or the guy with the information, or the or who, whoever it is for whatever reason yeah it's an interesting experience and it has a time travel element to it and funny thing about this game is that i think the cre creator was uh, heavily inspired by the zero escape series and I actually played No One Has to Die before Zero Escape, and people actually said in the comments, Oh, if you liked No One Has to Die, you should definitely definitely play the Zero Escape series. And that's why I actually played this series. So, uh, credits to this game. This game might be a C rank now, but it's not bad by any means. The soundtrack is absolutely great, and the game is also very short, which is why it's C rank. I honestly think the atmosphere and the mystery is actually very worthwhile, especially considering you don't need much time to play this game and finish it. Yeah, you only need for like an hour to actually finish this game, which is Great, if you're a busy man. So, uh, let's move on. Nine hours, uh, nine hours, nine people. Yeah. Uh, I mean, should I make this an A tier or B tier? Look, let's, for the argument, say let's, it's B tier for now. It's not a bad game by any means necessary, it's a really really good game. I actually played this when I was 13, which is a little odd, especially since this is for a mature audience, and there's some very gruesome and scenes and descriptions. But uh, I mean, as a kid I wasn't even faced by it, I was just enthralled by the mysteries and wanted to unravel the truth from getting all those bad endings. And the bad endings in this game are really good. I mean, the knife ending was my first ending that I got and it was super underwhelming, but the other endings are pretty impactful. That being said, uh, from all of which, I mean, this game has a lot of nostalgia to me. So, my eyes are a little, might be a little blinded when ranking this. And also, a uh, fantastic idea to make this game happen on the Titanic. I heard that the, the author Uchikoshi wasn't actually going to uh, okay, make the game take place on the Titanic, but somewhere in the mansion, which is uh, a little more boring. So whoever said uh, Titanic is a much better place to take for the death game, uh, Kudos to you! And the characters are also very fun to interact and very developed and fleshed out. They're just fun people, you know? 
the jokes are on this game land hard and I think for the most part this game's characters act realistically or realistically until Uchikoshi wants to info dump a certain info about the morphogenic genetic fields and all that jazz so yeah this game's pretty good now, it's sequel, Virtue's Last Reward, is even better. Yeah, I honestly think it's, it's uh, a tier above 999. It's way longer than 999, and the info dumps in Virtue's Last Reward are almost as good as 999, I would say. And the mysteries in this game are top-notch, very unique. Now, some of you may know that Virtuous Last Reward has a time travel element to it, and because of that, there are some plot holes, but I'm okay with them. In all honesty, I, I think people focus on plot holes and are kind of wrong and annoying because uh, the game is supposed to be entertaining and fun and be a unique experience. Virtue's Last Reward is uh, definitely a, a very unique experience. I have uh, never seen anything like this game. It's a dev game with a very unorthodox mysteries. There aren't there are the uh, who killed who type of mysteries, but there are also like who is these people, why are we here, and uh, what does X relate to Y, and what is happening outside the death game, and so on. There are many uh, strange and uh, unique mysteries to this game. The characters in here are almost as bad than 999. I mean, it's subjective uh, after all, but yeah, it, they might be better, and Phi is pretty great, Sigma is... I like Junpei more, but Sigma is pretty cool. Overall, yeah, it's a fantastic game, and unlike 999, 999 has by far the most blue ball ending I have ever seen in my life. Virtuous Last Reward has a blue ball ending, but, it, but uh, the characters get a, an explanation, a full explanation of, of what is going on at the end. Whereas in 999, some things are left a, a little bit too obscure for my taste. So yeah, I mean, VLR, fantastic game. Okay... AI the Somnium Files, let's see. Wait, so AI is uh, definitely up here. It might be here. I'm not sure. So let's talk about AI. AI is made by the same guy, Michikoshi, who wrote the Zeroscape series. And in my opinion, I think it's better than 999. I mean, it's crazy to conserve it because 999 is such a good game. And well, AI doesn't have Tommy Miami bullshit, so it definitely is more coherent and doesn't have much plot hole. And it's more akin to a, it's more akin to Ace Attorney than. Zero escape, if anything, but it somehow manages to be both over the top and sci-fi-ish and have grounded mysteries that make logical sense, but they, but the, but the plot twists uh, also have a sci-fi element to it, so yeah, and uh, the writing for this game is definitely entertaining, I think the jokes are pretty good. A little too much sometimes. Zero Escape ha games have a better atmosphere, I, sh I will say. But 
I also think that the soundtrack for AI is fantastic. The visuals are also fantastic. I know there are some jank moments, but Zero Escape is far more janky. And uh, I also like the, that the AI summoning file take, takes place in a futuristic setting and in a town in a free to roam world whereas, uh, whereas a Zero Escape series is a dev game. Kind of like and appreciate the world building more and uh, I really like how there are politicians who are corrupt, and there is the Mafia, the Yakuza gang, and all sort of interesting groups and uh, families living in, in their own environment, ra rather than just being kidnapped and you spend the entire game inside a facility, which is uh, quite limiting in what you can do for this, in regards to the Zero Escape series. So yeah, I think Sony Files is definitely the most grounded Uchikoshi work because if you have played the Uchikoshi's games, Uchikoshi Kotaro's games, they have some really bizarre and bizarre plot twists. This one has some good plot twists, but it remains grounded, which is very impressive. Also, Mizuki's best girl. I mean, Fai is pretty good too, but yeah, that is pretty good. Nah, I mean, the, uh, I mean, all three games have a solid ca cast of characters. I will say. Zero time dilemma. T T D. Oh my God! What a travesty. Okay. I am tempted to put GTT on E tier because for a long time I used to hate it, but now I don't have hatred inside of me, <laughs> and I kind of do enjoy enjoy uh, people playing, the, watching people play this game. The biggest offender for this of this game is how badly the Redcon's virtues last for and nine and nine. And the plot twists in this game are so unnecessary and sometimes so dumb at the same time. This game definitely has a quite a few unique ideas. Uh, but I think also the unique ideas of this game kind of hampers this game down. For example, 999 and Virtuous Last Report have great ideas too, but the ideas themselves benefit the, the, the story. For example, in 999, uh, characters use these uh, bracelets to make a digital root number to go into different rooms with, uh, with a certain amount of people. And that created a very interesting dynamic. Basically, it also created a chance for a murder mystery to happen since the characters have to split up in order to accomplish goals. And in Virtue's Last Reward, characters uh, trusting one another is tested through the prison's dilemma. I honestly think the Virtue's Last Reward's uh, ally and betray system is a very interesting, for, interesting setup for a death game, and it creates some very interesting scenarios. Zero's Time Dilemmas, Amnesia Bullshit is just too much. Basically, there are no character development and story progression because uh, the characters get amnesia all the time. They uh, wake up, they don't know what happened. They might have, ha have forgotten uh, about what had happened previously because of the... Uh, Amnesia potion they were injected and after 90 minutes they get injected in an amnesia potion and they forget everything that happened in 90 minutes. Now the advantage to this is that you can play this game in any order, you can jump onto a different uh, section of the story 
and you will not be spoiled because the characters also don't remember what happened. But that's such a bad idea that's kind of hampers the, the storytelling. I mean, basically nothing happens in this story because characters keep forgetting what happened in the past. So, yeah. Like, there are some very emotional and good aspects to this game, which is why I'm not putting this on E, but I definitely will put it at D, because it's dumb, and it retcons the Zero Escape series, and it has some really dumb moments. So yeah, I mean, this the entire Zero Escape trilogy, along with, uh, uh, Chiyoki's latest AI The Somnium game. Now, now, now. There is one uh, thing, uh, game I played from the Infinity series, and that's Remember Eleven. Remember Eleven is alright, but I don't think it's as fun as 999. I mean, it's kind of hard to say, you know, because uh, 999 is a uh, death game while Remember 11 is it is also a survival story but has uh, some very slice of life moments. And I kind of do like the relaxed relationship and things that happen during the relaxation moments. But they but they also kind of feel like fluff a lot a lot of the time whereas 999 is a very tight game writing wise there aren't that many fluff and i also like uh, the characters discussing theories and being uh, trying to survive in a tense situation where whereas in uh, remember 11 well kokoron is in a tense situation too but it's not as bad and there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of uninteresting moments in this game. This game kind of drags, is what I'm trying to tell you. But regardless of that, there are some really cool twists in this, and this game teaches you how to survive in the winter. If you survive a plane crash and you're inside a cabin and there's snow, there's a snowstorm outside. The game it teaches you how to survive, and that's pretty cool. So yeah, definitely worth playing, but there's a reason that it's worse than 999. This game has even a worse cliffhanger ending than 999. This game is basically incomplete. At least Virtue's Last Reward gives a pretty good sequel to the 999 game, but uh, Remember 11 is an unfinished game that just stops at the very most interesting situation because uh, production issues and all that. So yeah, I I'm, I feel com comfortable putting this up below 999. <laughs> now, what do I rank now? Well, okay, there's a. Uh, well, if my server members are watching this, they probably want me to rank Dengeng Rompa. And I'm happy to say that, yes, Dengeng Rompa is better than Remember 11. Again, it is kind of su subjective and there may be people who think that Rem Remember 11 is better than Dengeng Rompa 1, but uh, Dengeng Rompa 1 is pretty fun, not gonna lie. And what's impressive about Dango Rumpa 1 is that it's not as long as Remember 11. It actually doesn't drag for the most part. The mysteries in this game are range from good to terrible. I mean, the first game case was kind of bad, honestly. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. 113, 11037. What a joke. I mean, I was 14, maybe I was even 13 when I first played the first Danganronpa game. And even then, that shit was so easy to figure out. 
And also the third case kind of has a very obvious culprit. I mean, it's, I mean, granted, people's ability to deduce stuff are different, but I don't know. I was kind of a smart kid. What can I say? And, but granted, case two, four, and five are pretty good. Four is kind of obvious too, but uh, the drama there is pretty good. And I also think this game has a lot of insight into society. Man, Danganronpa has this, we'll, we live in a society type of theme. I mean, not a lot of people think so, not a lot of people say so, but generally, the game kind of criticizes the Japanese mentality of talent is everything and your uh, proficiency and your proficiency in society is what determines your worth or something along those lines. Uh, yeah, generally, People don't uh, pay too much attention to people's true nature. So, using that, Monokuma kidnaps these oldest talented students and pits them against each other to show that, hey, those kids aren't as innocent and uh, uh, happy go lucky as they seem to be. There are more than meets the eye than just talent. This one, yeah, it has some rough edges, but ultimately I think the pacing is pretty good. It's actually quite fast. I'm honestly surprised that when I played uh, Danganronpa V3, I went back to replaying uh, this game. This game just goes fast. Like, the first victim just dies quite fast into the game. A few, a few hours at least. Yeah, it is uh, arguably the weakest Danganronpa game, and uh, Kodaka, Ka Kazuteka Kodaka, the creator, definitely improved and become more talented and wise as time goes on. So, overall, a solid game. And even if some of the mysteries are kind of predictable, I still like it. I like most of the gas and it's pretty entertaining. And I kinda got accustomed to Danganronpa's com comedy. I mean, I'm a, I have a pretty open taste when it comes to, well, anything, especially comedy, so some of the humor and references are pretty welcome in my eyes. If there's a better game than Danganronpa 1, then Danganronpa 2 is a much better game. Yeah, I think it's better than AI. I honestly think the mysteries in this game are so crazy. And this, this game has a lot of fantastic characters and themes than Danganronpa 1. I mean, Makoto's a decent protagonist, but Hajime is just fun. And uh, he's also more depressing. Depressed, which is actually, which actually makes him a lot more interesting to observe and analyze than Makoto. Nagito was pretty damn fun to hang around with. I mean, he was kind of a bro in chapter one, and then even after uh, his changes, he's still really a fun person to hang around with. And Fuyuhiko was pretty great. I mean, there's a lot of characters that's just really colorful and fun, like Gundam, Ibuki, Sonia. Man, I sim for Sonia, and I sim for Chiaki. I mean, Kirigiri was fun to hang around too, but Chiaki is as smart as Kirigiri, but is more appealing and fun to hang around with, actually. So yeah, the characters here are a lot more endearing. Um, and less ass assholeish than <laughs> Danganronpa ones. Danganronpa has one has some really selfish assholes, man. But uh, this also one unique aspect of Danganronpa one. 
And also, the ending plot twist is far more interesting than Danganronpa 1's. Danganronpa 1's final twist is kind of, eh, it's okay, I guess, type of ending. Well, there are some aspects about Danganronpa 2 that I, that's kind of irking me, specifically about how it's similar to Danganronpa 1 in a, some ways, in a lot of ways, but it, it tries to be all original. It, uh, it tries to twist the, uh, tw twist the twists of the first game and make them unconventional and support people's expectations and for the most part succeeds in it. So yeah, overall, it's just like Dang Danganronpa 2 is just Danganronpa 1 but improved and it's more just crazier. The mysteries are crazier, more fun, the twists are more crazier and more fun, the characters are fantastic and yeah. Yeah. Now, if there is uh, now now we have to rank the anime. Now this isn't the technically a a mystery game, but uh, we have to rank it because it's the finale of the Danganronpa series and who boy, like I'm not accidentally putting it like this, okay? But I, I think this is the appropriate ranking for <laughs> Danganronpa 3D anime. First of all, the animation is kind of bad. The opening songs are pretty good, but opening songs are just opening songs, man. They don't make uh, the whole experience good. And uh, this game, this anime just was just uneventful. Like, what happens in Despair Arc? They retcon the only good, a good t twist from Danganronpa 2 by making everyone a goody two shoes. And Jinko is just so obnoxious in, in Despair Arc. And in Future Arc, basically, doesn't matter. You. You meet a bunch of nobodies and they die. I guess it had some interesting twists. But here's the thing. I actually think Future Arc is better than uh, the Spare Arc solely because it has some entertaining moments and it's a new story. Whereas the Spare Arc is kind of fluff, kind of pandering, and it basically is retconning everything for everything from Danganronpa 2 and making everyone look like a uh, innocent little babies which I don't like I mean Crafts Dwarf created an anime analysis regarding these two and I kinda agree on most of his points I mean they completely ruined Naito and Despair Arc I mean, come on like at least I think Future Arc doesn't ruin the characters they are they are kind of underwhelming there but they're not ruined makoto is kind of useless most of the time but like what can he do he was always useless outside of trials and in case of a battle, battle royal like death game where strength matters makoto is kind of screwed i'm honestly kind of surprised he did something at towards the end <laughs> which is a theater i guess so yeah i actually kind of like oh wait come on yeah this is the future arc this is the spirit spirit is kind of worse than future in my opinion but future isn't that all great like yeah i kind of could could put this at d or i can't could have i don't know dragged ZTD here, but ZTD has interesting gameplay and ideas. I honestly kind of like the idea ideas present in this game. Even if it absolutely retcons and it absolutely creates some dumb de decisions, yeah, I like it more than the anime. What can I say? Wow, all through the Spear Girls, <sighs> I didn't finish it. Like, if I were to rank it, it will, from what I have seen, 
I will rank it like this, but I don't feel comfortable about putting it up there because I didn't finish it. I need to definitely finish this game. Now, the game I finished and played multiple times, or at least watch other Let's Players play it, is Danganronpa V3. And Danganronpa V3 is the first S rank. Oh boy, I freaking love this game, man. This game is the ultimate Danganronpa experience. It takes all the good aspects of 1 and 2 and just shoves them in. And it also has its own unique, interesting themes and stories and characters. Shuchi and Kaida are just fantastic. They just completely blow blow all the all the characters from Danganronpa 2 and Danganronpa 1 away. I mean, Kaito's fantastic, Kokichi's fantastic, Maki's great. Maki, I mean, the characters just feels like so much improved, so much like an improved version of the previous characters. Kaito just feels like a better Hajime, better Makoto, and Shuji just feels like a better Hajime, Makoto, and, and a better Kirogiri. I actually think so. And Maki also feels like a better Kirigiri. A more emotional, with more de development. And I mean, yeah, Maki isn't as competent as Kirigiri per se. But I also like the fact that Maki has a lot of flaws too. Kaido is just a bro, dude. He's so badass. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, and the. And I actually think the mysteries in this game are far better than, than two's too. Then the first case of this game is like one of the best cases in the series. And it's just the first case. Danganronpa's one's first case is a joke. Danganronpa 2's first case is uh, okay. I mean, it's just okay. Danganronpa V3's first case. Is a masterpiece. Danganronpa 2's case is arguably the weakest case in the game, but it's still somehow better than a lot of the cases in Danganronpa 2 in my eyes, which is crazy. And the people who don't appreciate the third case of V3, what are you smoking? The seesaw effect, man, it's so good. We uh, The third case has one of the most creative complicated and fun mysteries I have ever seen in a mystery game. And the fourth, fourth case has a... I mean, the mystery isn't that great, but it's still decent, and uh, the drama in the fourth case is really, really strong. The fifth case is uh, also one of the best cases in, this in the series, and one of the most fun I ever had <laughs> in a mystery game. And... Unlike some people, I really appreciate the ending. Yes, it is controversial for a good reason, but the ending has so much message and insight into a lot of uh, subject matter. And if you hate Danganronpa if you're sending, hey, that's kind of good because it just shows that you have a lot of learning to do. You need to learn to be more open-minded to it, the ending, I think. I mean, I'm not saying it's wrong to hate it or anything. I, I mean, if you hated it, it just shows that you have certain beliefs, uh, uh, beliefs and prejudice against certain types of ideas. And Weaver is all about just subverting ideas and trying to challenge people's misconception of what it means to write a good mystery, what it means to write a good story. And what it means to like look at life in a lot of ways. Yeah, this game has some very interesting themes and ideas, and explores uh, some very interesting subjects, and says something also interesting about them too. About uh, about basically, what I learned from this game is that you shouldn't cling to an idea, a certain idea, a certain belief. In fact. Danganronpa V3 is all about understanding the, the 
all aspects of uh, life and all all aspects of different mentalities and uh, not being too attached to them using them and throwing away it's just like uh, what uh, one of the characters said in the end where well it doesn't matter what is truth and what lie is yeah. if uh, if some truth can uh, bring the world to despair and some lies can uh, uh, help reality so I think it's a very powerful message and this game has just this maturity to it that the other two games just doesn't have and uh, could I, I mean, I'm uh, not the one to speak, but I think Kodoka has grow, grown as a writer and the way he sees uh, a lot of subject matters in life has greatly expanded over time. And it's really apparent for V3 as he's willing to experiment with a lot of strange ideas and uh, also commentate on them through different characters and with different ideologies. So yeah, this game is absolutely fantastic. It's uh, and its mysteries are extremely creative. I'm not saying they're that hard to predict, but that's fine because sometimes games do have some bullshit twists that you that's impossible to logically predict. I mean, 999's tw some of the twists are so out of left field. Uh, there, there's basically for foreshadowing that's against certain twists and instead of a twist that doesn't make sense I would rather prefer that twists that are make sense and guessable to a most part and yeah you can pretty much guess almost every twist that's gonna happen in this game if you're like big brain and and experienced with a lot of mystery games but that's good, that's, uh, that's a sign of great foreshadowing and a great m mystery writing. And uh, you get to appreciate a lot of this foreshadowing when you replay this game uh, again and again and watch other people uh, play it and form their own theories. So yeah, fantastic game. <laughs> and I think that's about it for the Dang Rumpa franchise. Uh, Now, there is one other series that needs to be ranked. The series I want to rank is... Ace Attorney. Where is it? Okay. Ace Attorney 1. I mean, it's hard. Practically, the first... I mean, Ace Attorney is such a weird game in terms of mystery because they spoil who the killer is at the start of the game and the, and even if they don't spoil it there are just so few suspects that who did it is very predictable and you might say that hey it doesn't matter who did it the finding the how they did it is way more important and I'm going to say Ace Attorney doesn't do that well. They literally show how the culprit, how the crime is committed, who committed it in the first clip of the chapter. Honestly, what's most interesting and engaging about Ace Attorney is its gameplay and pointing out lies and contradictions. And since, you know, the justice system is rigged, uh, you get a lot of uh, testimonies from the two culprits who make bullshit arguments and testimonies and you have to prove their bullshit. Sometimes, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And if I look at this game at a lens of a conventional mystery writing, it's kind of bad. I mean, think about it. The first, they spoil the first culprit in Danganronpa 1. At least they don't spoil it. 11037 is at least harder to figure out than literally the game giving you the answer. But I think the gameplay of Ace Attorney is very fun and very very engaging 
and it's very fun to point out the lies and contradictions of witness testimonies. Yeah, and if you think about it from a pure mystery standpoint, the first case is a complete joke. The second case is also a complete joke because you know who did it, you know why they did it, you know how they did it. In fact, it's a very simple hit and run type of mystery. But uh, the fun doesn't come from the mystery, it comes from the gameplay and uh, pointing out uh, the lie in the culprit's testimony or lies in general. That being said, the third mystery, the third case, actually has a decent mystery. Not everything about it is telegraphed. And uh, the fourth case is also really, really good. I'm honestly putting this case, this game about Dang Rumpa 1 solely because of the first case. In fact, I mean, okay, I'm going to put AI above here, 9 and here. Honestly, yeah, 9 and is an AI. A, a stat game. Ace Attorney, the final case. And I, when I say the final case, I'm not talking about Rise from the Ashes because I didn't play it. I actually pl thought that the game ended on the fourth case. You know, Fair Turnabout Goodbyes, I think was the name. That The fourth case of this game is quite good and honestly just carries the game altogether, which is why I'm putting it about Danganronpa 1. And in general, Ace Attorney has a really fun gameplay. Now, justice for all. Justice for all. Justice for... <laughs> I mean, it's so hard to rank. I practically think that Danganronpa 1 and Justice for All are basically on the same tier. Uh, I basically have similar feelings to them. Not that they aren't a different game, they are quite different, but in, ter in terms of how I appreciate them. Yeah, the first case of this game is, has a pretty bad plot hole. Basically, a guy was thrown off uh, from a high place and broke their neck and somehow was able to write a dying message and you ha you proved that the dying message was wrong, but uh, not by pointing out that the call but that the victim died instantly, but for other other means. And the fact that the kill the victim died instantly is completely ignored in the, in the first case. That's kind of obnoxious, and not to mention that the ca the case can be completely skipped. And it's not that interesting. The second case of is good. I don't remember the name of the case, but it's a pretty good case of uh, Maya being accused of murder again. And uh, it's better than Turnabout Sisters, I'll tell you that. But it's also kind of predictable. And Turnabout Big Top is uh, obnoxious. It has a really funny twist to the mystery, kind of a bullshit twist to be exact, but I don't mind, I, I just thought it was funny. And uh, it's a little bit obnoxious uh, and the case is kind of predictable except for the bullshit part where it's not predictable. It's not that great of a case. I honestly think that the samurai case is better. The fourth case I know people love the fourth case of Justice for All, and they say that it completely makes the game, but uh, I think it's kind of overrated. Basically, during the first trial of the fourth case, fourth case is really kind of good. It's good, quite good. But uh, the second trial, you basically stall for time. That's it. And that's not very impressive. And even if the gameplay and pointing out people's lie 
during that second trial is fun and there are some great comedy and drama moments. The mystery is kind of lacking in the in the fourth case. I mean, I have to replay them, I guess, but I think my opinion didn't change, won't change that much. And uh, what can I say? The first case has a lot of charm, and I I actually like Edgeworth more than Francisca, and uh, I I solely rank this above the this game because of the final case. I mean the fourth case, the fourth case, turn about goodbye is just such a great case for Edgeworth's characters and even Phoenix's character and Larry was great there too, so yeah, justice for all. I think the final case is overrated. That's probably why it's so low. Trial and Tribulations it's a really good game! Ah, will I rank it above Danganronpa 2? I could! I honestly could! But at the same time, the game kind of just revolves around Dahlia Halfborn. And Dahlia is not that very interesting of a character. The mystery, the final case, is hands down one of the best Ace Attorney cases. But, um, do I put it here? I mean, Dangropa 2 has some pretty nutty cases and plot twists. So. It's pretty close. I could do this or I could do this. I'll do this. So yeah, Phoenix is fantastic in this game. And uh, Godot is just so cool, dude. I'm one of the best first characters and one of my favorite characters. I know for some reason he's a controversial character. I mean, he's sort of an antagonist, yes, but you gotta appreciate people for being an antagonist, dude. Yeah. Godot is cool. Mysteries are great. The first case is actually one of the better first cases in the series. The second case is kind of overrated too, but it's not that bad. Not as bad as uh, Sisters. It has some obnoxious. This game has some obnoxious gameplay moments where basically you have to present uh, a file for a certain characters in order to progress the investigation. And it really bugged me because I feel like I was getting stuck even if I shouldn't logically. And I have to. And I have to find this. Bullshit uh, answers in order to progress the investigations. I just didn't like presenting profiles, man. They're so obnoxious, and it's and it's mandatory to present certain profiles. I don't like that. But uh, third case is pr pretty fun. Fourth case is good. Fifth case is amazing. The final case is just amazing and yeah i mean uh, yeah this game has some really solid mysteries and it's worthwhile to uh, revisit and the gameplay trial sections are fantastic the investigation sections has some really hard moments where you could easily get stuck due to due to bullshit gameplay mechanics Locking you out, but yeah, overall, great game, fantastic game. Now, Apollo Justice is also a pretty good game. Nah, yeah, I'll do this. Apollo Justice has one of the best first cases in the entire series, and uh, this is a controversial op opinion, I think, but I really like turnabout corner it's just a fun mystery to solve i mean uh, the culprit is kind of obvious but the mystery and how they did it was really interesting i was on, uh, on the edge of my seat the whole time i just couldn't figure out how the crime happened but it turns out it has a very interesting uh solution and 
Turnabout serenade, serenade is just hated for no reason. I think serenade is quite fun. I honestly think it might be better than uh, big. I mean, it's better than Big Top, that's for sure. And it might be better than Samurai. I actually think so. Uh, basically, people hate it because of a certain plot hole that isn't actually a plot hole. Basically, people forget that in a locked room situation where a single person is a suspect, the police in the Ace Attorney's world has to arrest somebody even if they don't have the great evidence for them. So, due to a faulty justice system, the police had to arrest the victim despite them being unable to kill the victim because they're the only suspect and it's a locked room mystery where only a certain person committed the crime even though they, there is no evidence that suggests they couldn't. Which is uh, why some people don't like it. I think it's just bullshit that this case is this much hated. I think it's a pretty fun case. And the final case is also really controversial. It's not as good as the final cases of case of the skin, but I think it's pretty solid. And I think it does fleshes out Phoenix's character fantastically. And speaking of which, I think Phoenix's in this game is just fantastic. One of the best interpretations of Phoenix's characters in my eyes. And it's a shame that they ret kind of retconned Phoenix in this from this game. He was really cool and badass and uh, uh, really like a mastermindish, uh, mastermindishly clever in this game. Apollo is also really fun, fun in this game too. Apollo and Juicy were really fun. The, the jokes just keep landing in this game, man. I just uh, I love this game's jokes. Diamond is cool. Maybe not as challenging, but definitely cool. I mean, the cases in this game are decently hard, so it's kind of cool that Gavin helps out. Now, you might be thinking, hey, uh, why don't you rank Dual Destinies? Well, guess what? The funny thing about Dual Destinies is that I didn't play it. Yeah, I'm spoiled on it. I know that they uh, retcon Hobo Phoenix and uh, brings back the lighthearted Phoenix, which is a big shame because he kind of just throws away all the development from his character. And genuinely, I think uh, one of the strengths of Hobo Phoenix was that he was kind of right. The justice system is shit. You, uh, you, and you do need to use some underhanded tactics to bring justice to, to certain villains. Because it's kind of easy to create an unsolvable mystery. It's kind of easy to bribe this bribe the justice system, and it's kind of easy to exploit some of the weaknesses. Apollo Justice tries to point that out, which was always apparent in the previous games too, that the justice system is flawed, and in, just, in Apollo Justice case, it's even more apparent. Heck, Serenade is actually one of the reasons why the justice system discussion works, because it's a proof that the justice system is corrupted and is he heavily flawed. You basically basically have to arrest somebody even if the evidence doesn't make sense and uh, you just ha and uh, once a person is arrested the whole justice system just gets tunnel vision into suspecting the first suspect. So yeah, I didn't play this game. I was spoiled heavily on Spirit of Justice and spoiled somewhat on Dual Destinies so maybe I will, might rank them in the future if I actually get to play them myself or see someone else play it for a let's play like I could rank certain games but I'm not really sure I guess I could rank Steins Gate remember but you have to know that I didn't play the visual novel, I only watched the anime. 
that I actually might think the anime might be a better experience because one of the problems I had with the anime was that it just dragged and nothing really happened. Genuinely, I think uh, I will just rank Steins Gate here. I mean, Remember 11 wasn't always interesting, but it had some really interesting moments. Steins Gate just pales in comparison to Virtue's Last Reward. I think a lot of the plot twists in Virtue's Last Reward are just crazy fun compared to Steins Gate, which the ending plot twist is kind of underwhelming. I mean, it's good, but it's predictable because I've just played too many mystery games and time travel stories. So yeah, maybe if I didn't predict it, uh, it would be would have been fun. But and yeah, it also doesn't have that much insight into life and uh, various uh, mentalities compared to V three. I guess the characters could be more fleshed out in the uh, visual novel, but if I were to rank the anime compared to all this visual novel, I would definitely rank it here. I, mean, I could rank Fate Unlimited Blade Works, the anime, but I didn't play the visual novel. However, I could rank Punchline. Huh. Punchline, Punchline, Punchline. Yeah. Punchline is definitely, like, the, uh, should be here, I think. It definitely has a few interesting plot twists. And it's so hilarious that the game presents itself as some sort of an itchy harem anime and turns out into a serious drama and time travel story. So yeah, yeah, fantastic twist there, which goes here and, uh, but it's not that impressive. Steins Gate definitely delves more into the time travel sto story, but I don't appreciate it mu much because, let's be honest, time travel isn't real. <laughs> I mean, I definitely appreciate the survival tactics Yomagi-san gives in Remember Eleven more than the time travel Waimi stuff in Steins Gate. Because... Let's be honest, if it was actually real and not made up, we should be able to time travel, but we don't. And uh, what can I say, I actually kind of like real stuff more than the fake stuff. Which is saying a lot because Witch's Last Reward is also about time travel, but Witch's Last Reward is just fun, man. It's just so crazy fun. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Oh, one thing. I definitely could rank Your Turn to Die. I'm only on Chapter 2, but, uh, yeah, it's a pretty good game. Yeah, I am. I'm not ranking the whole game. I'm all, I said I'm only on Chapter 2 before the main game. So... Yeah, this game has a lot of potential. I'm going to keep watching uh, a Let's Play of Weeby. I'm currently doing that, actually. And... Uh, uh, yeah, maybe I could even do this, if I'm honest. But I don't want, want to rank a game that I haven't finished high-end. Also, Ace Attorney Justice for All is actually a pretty solid game. So, yeah. Oh, that's right. I could definitely rank Ace Attorney Investigations even if I didn't finish it. Look, I played the first four four cases of this game, okay? And it's really good. Like, I don't know why people say that Investigations 2 is so much better and Investigations 1 is bad or something. I actually think Investigations is solid. I honestly think that being a detective and uh, investigating the crime scene as a, and a prosecutor is just way uh, more fun than being a defense attorney because you get to point out lies in people's testimonies but you also get to 
point out the flaws in people's arguments, and that, and that doesn't that happen much often in the previous games. Heck, this game also has some very good gameplay mechanics like the logic, pointing, uh, point click, and so on. The gameplay in this game is just so good. The mystery is also very really fun, too. I guess it doesn't have that much of a main story, but I don't care. The mystery is solid, so it's a solid A rank for me. Granted, I haven't played the final case, but judging by the fact that most Ace Attorney case games have a solid final case, I think I will enjoy it when I get to play it. But I'm too lazy and I'm not playing it. Unfortunately, I'll get to it someday. So, until then, this game is a solid A rank. I mean, a game that I haven't finished playing being an A rank is saying something. I killed the rank goes through, but I honestly don't want to. I think the, so the answer to all the mysteries is what makes the game, or so people say. And I haven't got to that part yet. Um, I haven't played Yumiko or Higurashi. I have tried to watch the anime, but it's very confusing. Huh. Yeah, that's about it. All the games that I will rank. I have tried to play Hotel Dusk. But the racing is a little too slow for my taste. So yeah. I hope you all enjoyed this ranking and hearing about my own thoughts. So, see you later.